keeping an eye on imaging. Discussion and commentary based on articles from Jack Cardiovascular Imaging. I'm William Zogby, Director of Cardiovascular Imaging at the DeBakey Heart and Vascular Center in Houston. And it's a pleasure to have with me today Dr. Richard Troughton from Christ Church uh, Hospital. He's the Director of Heart Failure there in New Zealand and Dr. Sharif Naga from the DeBakey Heart Center, also director of the Echocardiography Laboratory. Well, it's a pleasure having you here. I know there is a, a study that will be published in Jack Imaging on heart failure and prediction of filling pressures in uh, patients with heart failure using Doppler echocardiography. I know there is an interesting twist about it, so tell us about it, Richard. Thanks very much. This was a study that we did with Dr. Jay Ritzima when she was with our group. And we had really a very unique opportunity. We were involved in a study looking at a new left atrial pressure sensor. So this is an implantable sensor. It allows the patients to measure their own left atrial pressure on a daily basis. And we thought this was a unique opportunity to look at validation of non-invasive echo estimates of filling pressure. So we enrolled 15 patients, each of whom had one of these implantable devices and we did serial echoes on them. On average, it was about four echoes per patient. And we wanted to test whether or not some of the echo indices, in particular the transmitral E to annular E ratio, would accurately estimate high versus low filling pressures. And what did you find? Well, what we found was interesting that we found that the most, that the best predictor of filling pressures was indeed the E on E annular uh, ratio. And we found it was very accurate at identifying a filling pressure either above 50 millimeters of mercury, or if we chose a cut point of 20 millimeters of mercury of left atrial pressure, the E on E annular index um, would accurately differentiate those pressures from, from lower pressures. Indeed, a unique opportunity to look at uh, a gold standard invasively or um, implanted invasively over time. Sharif, you uh, and your committee of the American Society of Echocardiography wrote the guidelines on uh, estimating pressure and uh, the use of echo Doppler in diastolic uh, assessment. How does this study help the overall evaluation of diastolic heart failure? So this study uh, addresses an important group of patients, patients with advanced heart failure and the accuracy of Doppler measurements in that population. There has been a recent controversy of whether Doppler can be applied to this population or not. And the study confirms the ability of Doppler to provide reasonable assessments of pressures and to identify patients with increased filling pressures and to track them as to whether they get better or they get worse. So to some extent, it provides validation to the approach taken by the American Society of Echocardiography and the European Association of Echocardiography to estimate filling pressures in patients with depressed EF. It also confirms the position of the mitral annular velocities in combination with transmitral E in that population as well. Right. But I think we have to remind the audience also that you could use those in the absence of heavy calcification of the mitral annulus in addition to prosthetic mitral valve, et cetera. So the mitral valve apparatus has to be rather normal. So absolutely correct. In patients who have significant mitral annular calcification, mitral stenosis, severe mitral regurgitation, pericardial constriction, these are all limitations where the ratio should not be looked at as the reasonable approach. There Wonderful. Are other measures. We look forward for, to see it in print and for your editorial, Sharif, uh, on, the, on that and uh, assessment of uh, uh, heart failure with echo Doppler technique. I want to thank uh, the panelists today and my, uh, you know, for a very insightful discussion on use of echo Doppler in the assessment of filling pressures.